Hey, it's Captain Matt with Boat Buyer Secret Weapon with Boats Not to Buy. We're going to talk new, we're going to talk used, we're going to talk old, we're going to talk some motors. These are boats that you want to stay away from if you're looking at buying a new or used boat. So who am I? I'm Captain Matt. I uh, have over 10 million views on this channel. We've helped thousands and thousands and thousands of boat shoppers just like you avoid the mistakes that are all too easy to make when you're buying a new or used boat. It's one that has an Evinrude Ficht, which is an older engine that was just problematic for a whole bunch of reasons, and the Evinrude G2. If you don't know, Evinrude shut down production several years ago of the brand in total. And so my prediction at the time was exactly what's happening now as I talked to Evinrude, former Evinrude dealers, certified mechanics on Evinrude, their parts are getting harder to find. There just weren't a ton of them made relative to Mercury, Yamaha, Suzuki. Um, and the aftermarket parts, they aren't going to be out there as readily. Evinrude is not supporting the brand like, um, or BRP is not supporting the Evinrude brand aftermarket like they said they would in the press release from what I'm hearing. Uh, and so just avoid it. You can get what looks to be a great deal, but you're coming at a problem. And both of those engines have their own issues. Now you'll find some people that are diehards. Don't fall for it. Avoid those. Next, we've got a boat that just, it hasn't been run in a long time. And you say, oh, it's a garage find. We found this great deal. Well, here's the problem. With boats that sit for a long time, there's mechanical components that can start to dry out. Uh, if it wasn't put away properly, if it wasn't winterized and you're in a freezing area, you've got major problems. Uh, if the fuel goes bad, you've got expensive, potentially expensive problems. Um, mechanical parts need to move. They need to be lubricated. You can have things seize up and things like the, the bilge pump, uh, any water pumps on the boat. You're just going to have little ticky tacky things. Uh, if it's anything is shifted, the steering or the throttle cable or our actual cables, those are all going to be dried out and you're just going to have issue after issue after issue uh, on that boat over the long haul. So be very, very cautious and stay away from those unless you're looking for a project boat. Next, is the first generation of anything new in boating. A new boat model, a new motor, like the Rotax. The Rotax, I'm gonna say, stay away from the Rotax even after a couple years. I don't see this brand sticking around for very long because everybody knows, and this is what happens, is the engineers come up with what's a great plan for brand new. But what they don't have the ability to do is test it in every environment, every situation that that is going to come into contact with in the real world. Salt water, running in cold water, uh, running with, um, you know, running in rivers and in sand and in not, not the normal conditions that they test in. They just can't test all the different variables. So inevitably what happens is they find things once it gets out in the wild and the consumers are using it, then they start to hear issues from their dealer network. Oh, we're seeing this issue over and over. And they start making adjustments and they make it better in the second and third generation. But water is going to get into virtually everything. If there's even just a little pinhole, water's going to seep in and cause problems. That's why the Rotax engine, in my opinion, is just a terrible idea. And at some point, water's going to get in there. Water gets into the engine block. No matter what safety nets they put in place, at some point, water's going to get in there and these engines are going to be coming up toast in a matter of no time. This is a sunken boat. Now, it's a boat that's actually gone down because, again, water gets everywhere. If it goes down, water's getting in places that you just can't get it dry, which means you're probably going to have rot. You're probably going to have mold. All of your electronics, especially if it's in salt water or toast, your wiring's going to be corroding. Even if it sinks on the trailer where you leave the plug in and the Bilge pump stops running because the battery dies. And now what happens? That water fills up. It starts getting into components of the engine. If it's an inboard or a stern drive, the starter goes first and then it just goes downhill from there. Again, corrosion um, are, are areas that are very troublesome. If it gets above the motor mounts, that water will seep in there. And now again, you've got rot issues. Uh, it's just a problem. Stay away. If you see that ring around the, the edge on the... the um, uh, bilge compartment. It's a sign that it's had water in there high enough to get all the dirt and the gunk and it sat long enough that it made that scum like on a bathtub. Stay away. Next are soft transoms. Now, like I said, water gets everywhere. And if you don't have your transom sealed up 
if water gets in there, whether it's through the rub rail, through a, a little C pole by a screw that wasn't sealed or caulking that wasn't redone, something like that, and that transom gets soft, well, that's where all of the torque and the pressure is from the motor. Eventually, you're gonna have a failure. And eventually, it's gonna be a very costly, expensive, challenging mistake. Watch our other inspection videos, see why this big giant screwdriver is gonna be such a value for you. Uh, because it is going to be helpful as you're checking on fiberglass boats, aluminum boats, to make sure that that transom is nice and strong because it can be devastating. Next is the XDP drive. Now, I got it transposed there at the bottom. I should have switched that. Uh, but this is a composite drive that was all the rage when it came out in 02. Back to don't buy the first generation of anything. They ran this for about five years. They found major issues with it in a number of different areas. There's class action lawsuits. Volvo has kind of just disowned it and said, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to deal with it. And we're just want it to, we want all those to go away. Um, but essentially, if you see an XDP drive on a boat, don't buy it. Just, just run away. I don't care how good the deal is. Just stay away from it because you're going to have problems with even just resale value. Um, next, if you're looking for a cruiser, I want an inexpensive cruiser. I get this all the time. Don't buy a cheap old cruiser without a survey. There's just too many systems, too many complexities for you to inspect that boat and make a good decision. You've got heating and air conditioning units. You've got plumbing. You've got black water holding tanks. You've got a toilet system that can be dirty, disgusting, and nasty to fix if it hasn't been maintained. You've got a water heater that's going to go out after 15, 20 years. You've got an air conditioning unit that's going to need to be replaced after 15, 20 years in most situations. You've got a generator, typically. You've got all of these systems, electrical all of these systems, in addition to just the motor, the structural integrity, all of that, you've got all of these systems that you are not the expert on. And if you make it a, a error in judgment, well, replacing a water heater, one, you might have to cut the floor out to get to it, depending on where it's at. It's going to be thousands of dollars to replace it. If it's an air conditioning unit, you're talking ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Can we get access to it? Do we have an aftermarket because the, let's be honest, after so many years, sometimes the OEM's not available anymore is there's an aftermarket that will fit without a lot of retrofitting. It can get very expensive if you buy a $20,000 boat and now you need to put a $15,000 air conditioning in it and a $6,000 water heater and you got to replace the duck valves in the, in the head. Well, now you've got a $20,000 boat that you had to put another $20,000 in it and it's still only worth $15,000 now. Be very careful, get an expert surveyor, make sure you don't make those mistakes because there's a lot of issues that can come up that you just are, are hard to find. A boat with too many hours or too few hours. There's both extremes can be problematic. I've got a whole video on what too many hours is when you start creeping up on a gas, outboard, stern drive, inboard engine, a thousand to 1500 is kind of the useful life. So as you start creeping up on that, expect to have more and more issues and general maintenance and repairs that need to be done that can be more costly, right? Because they're more major issues. Um, if you're on diesel, you're talking 15, 20,000 hours. So diesel is a different animal. Uh, but too few hours can also be an issue. It means that that mechanical engine wasn't run consistently and it sat for a long time, which can be seals drying out, things seizing up, uh, oil being contaminated, all these issues by it not being run consistently over time. And typically, if it's an older boat, those years that it sat are more recent. It sat more recent and was those hours are all front loaded. So it may have sat for many years at a time or many months at a time, uh, which can be problematic as well. So watch out for both extremes and find that happy medium, a soft floor. Now, so this, this video, if you want a project boat, Go get a project boat. You know what you're getting into. But if you want to get on a boat, go enjoy it with the family. Soft transoms, mechanical issues, soft floors. Those projects are bigger, nastier, dirtier. And I almost guarantee that you're going to find stuff you didn't expect to find. And they're going to be more expensive and a bigger problem than what you initially think before you tear into it. Soft floor, again, water's going to get everywhere. Did water seep in? and start getting into that foam layer, and now your boat is hundreds of hundreds of pounds heavier than what it should be. Has that water seeped in and gotten in any wooden stringers, any composite stringers that, that's still gonna cause a problem and degrade whatever the composite material is? 
those are all serious issues um, that come with, you start noticing a soft floor, slow down, slow down, <laughs> older jet boats. So I say older, like around 07, 06, 07, um, it is sort of when they made some technological improvements, right? They got better. Uh, but jet boats in general tend to be bought by people because of the nature of the boat that run them a little bit harder. They run at higher RPMs, which means those engines have to work harder in general. Uh, they're pretty simple, but they can be challenging to work on to find people that are good at fixing them when they start having issues. Um, they're, they're more beaten up. They're more beaten up in a lot of cases. So be very cautious on older jet boats. I, jet boats are awesome. I love them. I sold Yamahas for a number of years. Um, they're a lot of fun for the right people. But just be careful that some of those old ones, especially the, if you go way back to the two strokes, uh, it can be so temperamental, so problematic, and not many people know how to or want to work on them. OMC stringer drives. We're getting in the Wayback Machine. OMC stringer drives. It's very, very difficult to get parts uh, in most areas. It's nearly impossible to find somebody that can work on them, that has the expertise to work on them, uh, and they're going to be a problem. Stay away. I had a neighbor of mine that I talked to him, told him what I did, and um, he said, yeah, our first boat had an OMC stringer drive. I had to sell it for a loss because I just couldn't get anybody to work on it. That's common all over the country. Uh, the force outboards. Now, again, these are older engines. They're finicky. They, if, if you get it dialed in and it's running good, they can run great. But any little thing goes off and somebody starts tinkering with it, they can be problematic and they're, they're just touchy. They're touchy engines. They had, people hated them from the very beginning and they're still out there. They're not as many anymore because they're so old, but don't just stay away, run away. Uh, now, boats that have expired registration. So here's what happens if you have a registration. Here's the risk of an expired registration is they may not have paid some property taxes, some registration fees. There may be penalties and expenses that the seller, once you buy the boat, they get their check, is they're going to be like, I'm not paying any back taxes. I'm not paying any back registration fees. That's your boat. You're responsible for it. And if you don't know about it, in some areas, it could be hundreds to thousands of dollars and just a big giant hassle. So if the registration's expired, take that extra step to research, is there anything outstanding that's going to fall on my shoulders? Now, legally, you're not responsible, but they are not going to issue your new up-to-date registration until that back amount is paid on the boat. They don't care who pays it. It's just that boat doesn't get registered again until those amounts are paid, regardless of who owned it during that time, okay? Next, if you have an unmismatched title, so you could have the boat have a title, the motor, if it's an outboard, has its own title, the trailer has its own title. If it's an inboard or a stern drive, the boat and motor are, are together, okay? And each motor will have its own title. Some states title, some don't. More of them are going to it than not these days. But if you don't have a title, and you should in your state, problem, make sure you've got all the paperwork that you need, call the DNR, make sure there's no funny business scam type stuff going on. But also, if the name doesn't match the name of the person you're dealing with, is there fraud going on? And on another side, if the serial numbers don't match, the VIN from the trailer and the title don't match, the HIN, the whole identification number from the boat and the title don't match, the serial number on that outboard and the title don't match, those all are going to cause just huge bureaucracy, bureaucratic nightmare. I get emails every year from people that say, I had to deal with this. I even had one that bought from a, a good, reputable dealer. They transposed the number. And it was six months of dealing back and forth and back and forth to get it resolved. And finally they did, but it was just a nightmare. Now imagine if you buy from a private individual and that happens, you're on your own. This dealer was trying to help them out with the wildlife or DNR, wherever they registered in that state. But if you're doing it on your own, just, just imagine going to DMV hell. That's what you're going to deal with, with a smaller department that has even more quirky and complicated rules and guidelines double check all the serial numbers and make sure everything matches and make sure you're not getting scammed. And next we've got the SEI lower unit. So a couple of reasons why this made the list is one, 
it's a cheaper aftermarket replacement. So somebody hits a stump, somebody does something stupid and doesn't uh, fill up the gear lube, they burn up their lower unit somehow, some way, same shape, form, and then they do an SEI because it's several thousand dollars cheaper. Now, one is they didn't take care of their boat and they hit something underground. Maybe they hit a stump, maybe they ran over a log, I don't know. But is there other damage that came from that incident? That's the first thing I've got problems with. Next is when they went to fix it, they went the cheapest route, right? They didn't go back to an OEM that's going to be just like new. They went the cheaper route to save some money. So what else did they go the cheaper route on to save money? Did they go non-OEM starter and they used an auto starter? Did they go non-OEM impellers and burn up impellers? We know that parts are becoming, they're parts from China that are getting into the supply chain system and they're, they're inferior in every way. There's major problems, but what else was replaced on that boat with an inferior product that you're gonna have to deal with in addition to just the quality of the SEI drives, there's a reason they're three, $4,000 less expensive. It's because they're, they're cheaper made and that's gonna cause problems potentially down the line. You're also, resale is gonna be less because of that. Um, so be aware of that, watch out for those. If you've got other issues that you've run into as a buyer that you wanna share, put them in the comments. If this was valuable for you, give it a thumbs up so that everybody knows YouTube can show it to more people, help more people. If you're buying a boat, get our free Boat Buyers Toolkit, 40 pages check with chock full of checklists, questions to ask, how to demo a boat on pontoons, bow riders, deck boats, center consoles, cruisers, whatever. It's all included in there.